Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's video segment, we're going to be talking about the Apple Watch, more specifically the Apple Watch Series 4, uh, which has gotten a lot of news uh, the last few months. Apple made a big splash in, two th in September 2018 when they announced that the latest generation of the Apple Watch was going to be able to detect atrial fibrillation. And so that announcement came in September 2018. And then in December 2018, they actually came out with these, all the software updates needed in order to be able to get your fibrillation. And so soon after all those software updates came out, there was all big splashy news articles of Apple Watch saves men and helps detect life-threatening arrhythmias. And so a lot of good press regarding the Apple Watch. But what does it actually do and how well does it, is it reportedly to, to work? So on the Apple Watch, Series 4 has a sensor underneath the, the watch, which is what is used for not only checking your heart rate, but also the irregularity and potentially detecting your atrial fibrillation. Uh, also with, this, with the crown, you actually put your finger on the crown there, uh, and it could help get a single lead EKG, which could help detect atrial fibrillation over a period of a 30 second analysis. Now, the watch itself has several read results. If you put, uh, try to do an EKG result on the Apple Watch, It'll either say that you are in normal rhythm. It can say that you are in atrial fibrillation. You can get uh, a notification how it's too low, too high, or inconclusive, which means it doesn't fall into any of those categories that have been preset on the on the Apple Watch. Apple does have several uh, pointers on its website about how to get optimal results. And having managed patients with similar types of wearable technology, uh, listen listening to these and and abiding by these best practices can really help you get the best results so that you can get the best information and as well as potentially transmit that over to your doctor's office. So some of the best results to get good EKG recorders are make sure the, tight, the watch is nice and snug onto your skin. It needs to really be pressing onto your skin well in order to be able to get an accurate EKG uh, reading. In addition, make sure that there's no water on your wrist at all. If you had just washed your hands, make sure everything is dry and there's good contact between them. Also, a very important part when you're wearing a watch uh, to get an EKG analysis is to actually rest your arm. If you're holding your arm just like this in the air, your arm is actually moving very subtly and it can actually cause inconclusive readings. So rest it on a table or, uh, or a desk or something that makes it nice and still when you're getting the EKG analysis. Now, what does this Apple Watch not do? Uh, so it's mostly a heart rate tracker and through the irregularity of the heartbeat as well as through that single lead EKG it's able to detect atrial fibrillation. However, it does not detect a heart attack. It does not detect a stroke. It does not detect high blood pressure. It does not detect other heart conditions such as congestive heart failure or, or it may not tell you, uh, you know, other heart, con heart, heart conditions. What I do find the most interesting about this Apple Watch is its alerts that system that it has. So it has spontaneous alerts, which is something very new uh, that can alert somebody if they are having episode or potentially having episodes of atrial fibrillation. And these are alerts that you can set up on, on your watch for either low heart rates, high heart rates, or even irregular heart rates. And so the watch itself isn't constantly looking for atrial fibrillation, uh, but if it does sense an irregular heartbeat, it can alert you and encourage you to do a proper EKG, which is when you put your finger on the watch and, and initiate the EKG yourself. So the alerting system may not necessarily detect AFib, but it may detect an irregular heart rhythm, which then can initiate yourself to be able to do a, trans, a transmission or record an EKG through, through your watch. So how well does it work? Um, well, Apple reports that in a study that it did with 600 people that it had a 98% sensitivity for detecting atrial fibrillation, which is pretty good. And the fact that it was FDA cleared and it got some FDA uh, cleared uh, notification tells me that this Apple Watch will likely be more accurate than not in order to be able to detect atrial fibrillation. Uh, for those of you who have older generations of Apple Watch, uh, only the Apple Watch Series 4 is able to do the EKG on the actual watch as well detect atrial fibrillation. But for those of you who have older generations of uh, Apple Watches, uh, there are accessories that are available which can do similar things and also do an EKG and detect atrial fibrillation. Uh, there's an accessory called a cardio band, uh, which has been around for several years, which I think is an excellent accessory, especially if you have an older generation Apple Watch. Uh, I have a blog article on my website um, called the Dr. E. Fib review of 
the cardio mobile and the cardio band, which describes that accessory a little bit in more detail. So what do I think about the Apple Watch? Well, I'm excited about it. Um, I think that this is something that has a lot of potential. Uh, do I expect it to be 100% accurate all the time? Uh, no, I think there will, may be some false positives out there. But I think over time it will get better and better. From a cardiologist standpoint, uh, if you research you know, what does the cardiologist think about the Apple Watch, I actually feel that a lot of my colleagues are very negative about the Apple Watch. A lot of, there's a lot of skepticism out there. They think that it's going to lead to a lot of false positives and a lot of anxiety about people's atrial fibrillation. But I view it in the other way. I think that it's going to be very beneficial for a lot of patients. I think it helps patients to be able to get more control of their own data and then be able to get more accurate recordings which can then be transmitted over to their doctor. So I think it's good to have patients to have more control over their own health care and their own health care data. So I look forward to, to seeing uh, where things go with the Apple Watch, uh, see how it gets better over time. And if you have an Apple Watch, if you're listening to this and you have the new Apple Watch and you've used it for your, your atrial fibrillation, please put a comment in this, into this video and let other people know how well it works for you or does not work for you because it may benefit other people. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.